Salesforce. Uh, this, uh, you know, <clears throat> they have branded this as Einstein just so that, you know, they can uh, keep themselves different and project AI solution towards it. So let's get started, Rutesh. Uh, yeah, uh, let's get started. Uh, like, uh, let's get started with a couple of our introductions who all are there as a host, co host, and other things. Uh, would you mind uh, moving on to the next slide? Yeah, the piece, please go ahead first. Yes, I'm the founder and CEO of RA Technologies. Uh, we are a Salesforce consulting partner, a uh, rich partner to be very specific. Uh, this year, and of course, last year, it was all AI. And that's the reason we are wanting to and do this webinar focused on fancy features from Salesforce on AI. Uh, okay. Hey, hi, I had the sales analysis part for RA Technologies. Uh, been in uh, sales and business development since last decade, uh, working towards Salesforce solutions, excited about AI, excited about cloud solutions, and being here. Prashant, okay. I'm going to go next. Hi, I'm Prashant. So I'm working here as a lead developer. I'm just uh, doing all the research on AIs and just trying to study uh, uh, and taking the interest on AI and just doing all the R&D stuff in the company. Awesome. Great. Great. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you, Rupesh. Uh, just running to the agenda, what we would be covering today. Uh, of course, a couple of introductions about ARIA and uh, what we are presenting. Then diving deep, what is AI? Because AI is a buzzword, what we are hearing since last one year, uh, like the start of the year also, AI, what is Einstein? Uh, what exactly is AI plus CRM plus data plus trust, what we are hearing from Salesforce as a new messaging uh, when the data club from last Dreamforce is happening from last September. Then a couple of use cases of Einstein AI with sales and services segment, and we would be diving directly on the demo, and we would be proceeding to. So, Dipesh, first question to you, like why AI, what is Einstein, and why people are so excited, why businesses are so excited about AI in this world? Definitely. So, uh, internet came, internet was a new thing, uh, and, you know, in 1970s, after the email was discovered, you know, everybody was a hey, email is possible through Internet. And then in 1990s, Internet took over. Uh, and we saw dot com boom uh, and later bust also from, you know, a lot of Internet companies. A similar kind of a revolution is going on right now. Uh, with AI, because a lot of possibilities are opening up. Especially in a B2C domain where, you know, everybody wants a personal touch. Uh, we are expecting the companies to know our preferences and only recommend us what we like. So that's the kind of recommendation personalization. We expect them to be efficient. We expect them to, you know, be responsive. If I call a customer care, I don't expect them to, you know, ask 10 questions to me. Straight away, I asked a question. Solve my problem. That's the hope, especially in the retail market. And we have seen this trend. Whatever works in the retail market has to come to B2B market. Now, as a business, you want to be efficient. Of course, not only the customer facing, but internally as well. You want to have more personalization. You want to have more efficiencies. Your frontline team needs to be, you know, uh, grow and retain and they need to enjoy their work as well and you know it should not feel like they're doing a lot of stuff you know it should be easy they should be more creative and of course as a business we you know want to increase efficiencies so this is a classic example in the logistics domain here where if there is no machine learning or no automation per se you know there will be losses where right thing will not be sent at right places and yes, there are losses. So that's our job as consultants, uh, digital transformation partners, to bring in the right uh, level of automation and effectively AI. 
Yeah, I agree with that point. So uh, nowadays, if I open Amazon or any e-commerce website, I guess get a personalized recommendation what I have ordered past, and of course, my family orders, so it's a problem. But I get a recommendation that hey, this is what you ordered ordered past, and this would be the recommendation you should order uh, next. That's a personalization level which I like, and it comes with a lot of restaurants as well. If I am ordering via Zomato or any other food ordering app, it helps us in a big way, and it helps. it increases the trust and loyalty with the brand what i understand true uh, true very true but a uh, diving deep on that uh, what's einstein and why the craze of einstein uh, being there so as i mentioned in the start of the webinar einstein is an ai solution provided by salesforce a salesforce is a crm platform okay it started with you know really sales cloud but today it is a big platform can do all level of automations it's a low code platform really now if they don't bring in ai then how will they be you know relevant in the market because a lot of low code can be done by any other platform right so that's where the introduction of einstein and a big focus on einstein for uh, of course all level of company starting from smbs to enterprise level everybody needs to transform and get the competitive edge in terms of ai uh why now it's just because now it is very much possible to do it uh ai machine learning is not a new concept we like the industry is working on it for past 15 years it is just possible now it has picked up pace so just ride the wave uh, it's just a umbrella of salesforce under which all the ai products are uh, based i don't think what i get it from you so why yes. businesses are so excited about it like i understand personalization and the speed and other parts but why businesses what's in it for business simple ai reduces costs and businesses need to optimize cost that's the forefront of every business every cio every leader you ask their focus is how they can cut the cost uh and you know automating stuff through ai is one straight answer which everybody has uh of course you know uh, when you have a lot of data you don't want people sitting and analyzing that data you know you want to bring in more automation in terms of recommendations from ai whether it is a predictive recommendation whether it is a generative recommendation so that executives can decision take decision faster and of course with all of this automation improves the productivity you know uh, 77% uh, productivity is increased if you used an automation uh, it it saves two or more hours a week for the organization per person if you bring in right set of automation and uh, there is of course a debate going on uh, on a lot of things i, I guess there is a survey on the next slide where a couple of IT, it leaders say hey the ai generative ai is very good for our company but couple of say that hey generative ai there is a security challenge with that uh, with implementing a ai our employees are not that well trained because everyone is not that tech savvy so what's your comment on this debate it's good it's bad it's like it's not good for the company what's your take on the ai for that same debate was there when internet came you know yeah. a lot of people felt like it will take away jobs but we see now in the hindsight it created a lot of jobs and i have a strong belief that ai will create a lot of jobs of course you know uh, redundant jobs will go away uh, you know if you are not smart enough then uh, you know coping up with ai will be difficult so smart jobs will be created per per my opinion now uh leaders say that uh you know uh, it will sometimes it will pose a security risk yes like any any other technology there is pros and cons to it uh we have to be smart about how we use the ai and that's where you know we have seen uh open ai being used and the code of x company samsung was really leaked by their engineers uh that kind of instances is, is not affordable to any company you know it's it's not okay to do that and that's where salesforce creates this layer which is a trust layer and your data is inside salesforce 
it does not go outside Salesforce so that uh, you know nobody can use it. So the generative AI and a predictive AI is done within the data of your organization. Simple as that. It doesn't go outside. Uh, can you talk a bit more on uh, that uh, the trust layer? Sure, sure. Uh, look, uh, we have the company data. We do all the grounding. As I said, Salesforce doesn't push the data outside. Even if it has to push the data outside, we can configure it. It has to be masked and then you know it can be pushed out. After a recommendation is generated from outside, it will come back into the CRM apps basically. So it's possible to get the you know data out, but Salesforce will ensure that only masked data is going out rather than the complete data. But again, this is a configuration which we as consultants can do, but in general, Salesforce recommends everything is in the same ecosystem. Let's not send the data outside. So that's a so, trust layer Salesforce has built. So the data of the organization or data which the organization own, the Salesforce users own, is kept in Salesforce and not shared with external parties. Even you are using whatever LLM in the market is, but you can leverage that LLM predictive or uh, generative uh, technology and have that prompt generated and have output of it. That's what you're saying. So the data is safe. As a consultant, we right. can do that. Data, data is safe with Salesforce. Salesforce, you know, is is a number one CRM and uh, it is built on trust. And that's where uh, you know Salesforce protects that kind of instances to happen. So this gives the entire feeling of like, hey, your data is secure. It is in CRM. However, you can use AI. So in uh, I am a person who is using the, the data which is available, putting it outside Chat GPT and coming back on my mailbox and sending that uh, that is not that secure this is a secure version of it what you are saying that is correct that is correct okay. great uh, great so we, hey, we can yeah. of course use llm from outside which are the models uh, uh salesforce definitely has models some companies like google and meta has better models better algorithms which can be leveraged with the mass data how Einstein does it like internally. So data is used internally and the outcome is, what are the outcome? It is learning from that outcome for that Einstein. It's internally that itself, instead of LLM using the predictive data or from the usage they're using from the results which are happening in Salesforce. All right. Yeah, let's go and see a couple of examples and demos and dive into it. So let's, let's get into the meat of it. Uh, so we'll go through our top use cases. First one being sales sales AI use case. Okay, we will. So as a salesperson, let's you know start Salesforce instance here. I will get into my sales app as a salesperson. I live and breathe on my dashboard. I want to know which customer I want to get in touch. So this is my dashboard. This is where I live. I want to focus on my key deals, which are the recent opportunities I'm working on. So let's say this is the opportunity which I am working on. I know for the fact that this opportunity is stuck at somewhere. I want to nudge the contact of this opportunity. Now, uh, of course, you will get opportunity scores and stuff like that. Uh, which is a pretty standard predictive function, but let's say I want to email them. So I would either email these two. I know decision maker is Mark. So let's say I draft an email for Mark here. How does a salesperson draft an email? They have to go write the whole email here instead of that. And a lot of salespeople have started using this technique where they go on chat GPT and say, can you draft an email? For this opportunity to do this magic for me. Instead of that, I'll just click a button called draft with Einstein. These are configured, uh, you know, uh, prompts, so to say. I'll say, hey, re -engage, reignite engagement with Mark on what product? I know I'm selling batteries to him. So, battery and bingo. Uh, here is Einstein working hard for us. 
to generate an email. That's it. I need to just provide a date and time, and that also can be automated if a scheduler is available. Uh, and that's about it. You just send the email, and this is already integrated with your Outlook, Gmail, whatever you use. So uh, it's an easy thing. If you noticed, I did not even type a subject. It was all automated. But it is at your review that you have to check and review and send because uh, you are the oh, decision maker. Of course. Maker and then. Yeah, this is where you know uh, AI is not taking over. AI is helping us optimize for an email like this, uh, including grammar and typos and everything. I need to check. I'll spend at least 10 minutes drafting this email and then I'll say, OK, correct this. Can I add this? Add that. Takes 15 minutes of my time to write an email. This is much easier just by click off button within Salesforce. Uh, it is taking the first name and other, other things, so it reduces uh, my my task of like typing it on chat GPT or BART and moving it here and it can be done on Salesforce itself. And not full screen. one screen, one screen. Yeah. Yes, and if I send this email, it will also appear in my activity feed, and that's the best part. And I can see and monitor the whole activity feed. If I go on the advanced communication account, it will also be uh, available here on this activity feed. You see this? Yeah. So, so it is available on an account, on an contact, on an opportunity, everywhere. So you see as a salesperson what you are talking to this account, this person, and this opportunity. Great. Awesome. That's use case number one. Let's go into the next use case, and it will become fancier and fancier as we move on. Depeche, can now a question? Yes, please. Uh, so I was. Um, this is uh, Renee Reyes. I'm with uh, Hudson Holmes, um, and I. Just wanted to ask about that. The ed, when if uh, you review and make changes to the email, um, does Einstein consume those changes and 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 use it for you know emails going forward by chance? Oh yes, and that's a very important topic. I did not spoke about that. Uh, yes, so it is. It is next time you you know do the similar email for this product or maybe a different product, whatever changes you did as a person, as a sales rep, it will adapt to your style on the next time. And if you see last time and this time, these were still different emails, not exactly the same wordings. So just like chat GPT, uh, you do prompt engineering there. Very similar here also, it takes uh, into a similar model where it will Consume the data which you are generating and will learn from your style and will adapt to it. And it will be adapting to individual person rather than everybody. Thank you. Great. So uh, let's move on to the service based features. Uh, let's say Einstein bots. That's another fancy feature which is particularly on the service side. Now, uh, for Einstein bots, I'll quickly move on to my uh, community site, which I'll be opening up in the site. Just allow me a second. So I am trying to open a community website which we have built in the background. And let's say as a customer. I have logged in into my community. And I know uh, this this service is an organization which I am working with. As of now, if I refresh the screen on the right below corner, you will say See the agent is offline, but the chat option is still open. And how does this work? Uh, this works because we have put in a bot in the background. So let's say I'll say 
where is my order currently when I start chatting it will uh, it will not push me through an agent but it will push me through a bot if you see this is a sunny bot and asks me what i am really looking at at this point i can say hey i am looking for a case or for you know orders or for knowledge article if i say hey search knowledge with what i said uh, order status and it recommends me hey uh, how do i check the status of an order and it will recommend me a knowledge article which was already there instead of a human giving me this all information uh, you know uh, this this particular bot is giving me that information and at any point of time i can transfer it to an agent or i can go to the main menu you know and keep talking with the agent now of course this is a demo and we can get into a full fledged use case what all the bot should be capable of doing but you know you have to just define the steps for that so that you don't have to do the repetitive actions again and again and again so that's and you can also schedule appointments from here i have to schedule an appointment for maintenance let's say and what maintenance wind turbine maintenance what type of work do you need us to perform and you just give the details of the work and appointment scheduler can be tied in into this so that all the appointments can be taken with the details filled in uh, through the bot and no human intervention here so that's that's one use case uh, uh, of einstein bot let's in the interest of time let's move on to the next use case uh, service replies for email and chat so since we are on the chat, let's see a service reply. For that, first I need to uh, switch on my Omni channel as a agent. So I'll say, hey, I am available on chat. I'm no more offline. Uh, so you can still chat with an expert. Now in this case, it will not directly move me to chat to the agent. Of course, you can define that, but it is putting an Einstein bot layer still in between. So that the load does not come to the agent directly. Since we are a manufacturing company, I'll say turbine is not working. Can you please help? Uh, and I created this on uh, today is 23rd Feb. OK, so it will still bring me to the same bot since that's the configured bot uh, in the background for us uh, and from there I'll say hey this statement which I gave I'm raising that as a case so it says OK you are an existing customer there are a couple of cases which you are currently working on uh, which exact case you are working on there are a couple of tests I did in the background but now is this is the case which I want to get in touch with uh, the the agent so he says we are transferring the chat. You see the background noise there. So I got a transfer as soon as I accept this transfer. I will be redirected to a chat script. Now from here I know that what all chat was done by uh, the bot. I already have the background. Uh, I with service replies, which are Einstein recommendations, already have some drafted messages, which has read this, and I can, you know, just post a message saying that, hey, I'm so sorry to hear about the turbine issue. Let me assist. It feels like an agent is typing the message, but really, agent is not. You know, the customer gets this message to the Einstein recommendations. Now, uh, as in customer, I'll say, uh, can you provide me installation instructions? Now, this goes here. As soon as this message goes, 
the Einstein is hard at work so that I don't have to search. The Einstein is searching for me. It, uh, you know, it can draft a message which is a context based message. Sure, I can help you with that. And uh, and a knowledge article which, you know, already has all the details of the turbine. So all of this, I can send it as a message. I can edit also if I want to, but if I don't want to, I can just send the whole message as is. So I don't have to apply my brain or waste my time because there is so much back and forth. Of course, I'll not be talking to one particular customer at a given point of time. I'll be talking to multiple and this is where the smartness comes so that I don't have to, you know, remember what's the context I'm talking about as an agent. Now, uh, let's say, OK, uh, customer says this helps. Thank you. Uh, and we can, you know, uh, exchange pleasantries here. Uh, and end the chat, so. It says I'm glad I could help blah, blah, blah. And say end chat. Now, uh, let's let's see. You saw there was service replies on top of that. There is work summary. As soon as I ended the chat, uh, a work summary got generated automatically, which is an Einstein recommendation again. Now. Problem is there's so much conversation happening in the chat. If we want to recollect what was the exact issue, it's a big problem to read the chat. Einstein generated summaries for you so that you know what is a close summary. What was a real problem? What was a contact reason? What was a resolution provided? And if I feel this is sufficient, I'll save it. If not, I'll add it to Rene's point to improve the model for future. So that's where uh, we save the summary so that next time any agent comes to this particular case, just to remember what was a conversation with the customer, they can read this and refer back. Okay, now that that was a use case of chat. Similarly, we can you know uh, do a uh, do a web to case uh, let's say this is my customer portal i want to again same thing turbine is not working okay i'll just take this example just because it's easier for demo purposes uh, not working please help me the customer is typing so much and we as agents are getting everything ready made here. So as soon as a customer puts in a request, a case is created in background uh, in Salesforce. I have I as a customer has a case number one two six two. I'll go ahead in Salesforce. And refresh this page. OK, I was not logged out from this. Huh, this is the case. This one. Now, as soon as I land here, <clears throat> there are a couple of things happening here. One is case classification. Now, a lot of details are not filled in. A lot of details are not filled in uh, when a case was created, and we have seen users uh, or agents being lazy enough not to fill in the details. So we would want to classify a case with recommendations from Einstein saying that what is a status? What is a priority? What is a type? What is a product family and all that? OK, now for something where uh, language and subtype, uh, if a proper information is not there, recommended by Einstein will be this because these are the pick list values. So we can still choose this and save this data point so that we at least from the future perspective know uh, what type of cases have what data points. So if you saw, I did not hand key the data. It was all ready made. Same uh, turbine is not working. Uh, you have articles here. You can still, you know, have the Einstein recommendations come in and say, hey, draft Einstein email rather than me typing the whole email 
for a case reply, Einstein is doing all the work for me. So, yeah, that's the email. Uh, since I guess the name was not populated and that's the reason the name is not shown up here. And that's where the human comes in to course correct from there. What extra messaging should be given? And you send this email and the case will be resolved. Of course, the case communication takes more than that, but you see the Einstein recommendation still will uh, play a very important role if the knowledge base is good. We have to be very con cognizant of saying the knowledge base has to be created first before going and using Einstein. So that were the two cases around service replies and uh, chat. We also uh, we also saw case classification into this example itself uh, so that data points can be filled up. Uh, recommendations can come in. Uh, that's case classification. Uh, the last uh, Einstein work summaries. Fortunately, we saw that with uh, chat itself. Uh, so. That's the top five features summarizing it again. We saw sales use case drafting an email. We saw Einstein bots. We saw service replies on both email and chat. Uh, we saw case classification where the data which is incomplete can be uh, predicted by Einstein and it is not predicting from you know anywhere. It is still predicting from the past closed cases you have in the system. If you have dirty data into the system, AI unfortunately is of no use. You have to clean the data first, then use AI. I'm trying to set a right expectation saying that AI is not a magic wand. It works great, but data provided to that has to be good. And uh, ultimately after case classification, we saw Einstein work summaries on the chat where we saved a work summary as well. Again, these are start of Einstein features. There are a lot of features in Salesforce for Einstein. This is just the start of it. Ritesh. Great, thanks. It will save a lot of time, and that's where how the revenue and other other fee, other revenue wise, the time, the revenue of a lot of sales and service reps would be reduced. And it gets a combined report of everything. What, how much time it has saved? The CSAT rating will improve, and it's a benefit for a lot of companies. So, uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, we have one more. Yeah, Dipesh, you are showing something. Oh, uh, uh, no. we even did not touch base on you know service performance reports and stuff like that. But all that is there. Not a topic for this webinar. This was solely focused on Einstein. Uh, but we are open yeah, to questions question. now. Oh, yes. yes I Renee. have a question. Uh, this is Renee Reyes again. Um, I was wondering the chat uh, bot component. Um, is that available only with Salesforce websites or can we use it with external websites? Uh, it. Let's we see. can use external also. Uh, we have the embedded chat uh, settings, so we can just have a uh, code that uh, will be auto generated in the uh, system and that we can just paste it in the external site and we can just use it. OK, great. great. Thank you for that, Prashant. Yes, so it will be Salesforce code placed in an external website and that's how the communication will open between the external website to Salesforce. Rene, no integration to be done. It is Salesforce responsibility to provide a piece of code to them. That's about it. It's great. Great to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome, but great question. Great question. This can be done on any website. Bot plus agent redirects as well. And of course, this form which you see uh, is very small. Uh, you can add as much details based on the business scenario, what you want and then define bots on what flows that needs to take. A bonus, uh, we have something called as Einstein best uh, next best action. So you see here next best action. Now, when the case is closed or at whatever point 
you have to define a strategy on how it works. So if you define saying that, uh, you know, we want to send an email to this customer because it meets, meets certain criteria, saying that thank you for being a loyal customer. We truly appreciate your business. As soon as I accept this action, something will occur wherein it will send a survey to the customer. It will send a thank you card or something else. You know, we have to just define it. So in this, this is a, just a demo. It will, uh, you know, send an email. We would like to thank you for being customer for so long and blah, blah, blah. And we just say next and great. I'll go ahead and send information. Uh, to the email address. So that's the basically a strategy flow. It can be defined uh, on any standard and custom object. You have to just define the strategy of what happens next. And that's why it is called next best action. Was not on agenda, but it's a good feature to have on Einstein. Yes, and it complements the Einstein benefits which we are doing on that. Uh, before going there, any other questions? Uh, anyone? Yeah, just just one. This is uh, Paul Park. I'm also at Hudson Homes um, Management. Um, Dipesh, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, I, I, let, let me let me ask it more in a general question, not not really necessarily specifically on the AI technology stack, but you know, one thing that 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 I get a lot of questions um, on is really the business case of AI. And what I mean by that is, especially with the economies, the way they are, people watching, um, especially the, the 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 folks that provide the funding, et cetera, and all that stuff, they're looking for a business case. You know, what wh where can what is AI going to do? I I know that. Generically, you can say, hey, it's going to increase your sales volume. Um, you know, and to be perfectly candid, you know, it it, it can reduce headcount uh, and all that. What exactly does Salesforce and RIA recommend to and, and Depeche, you know, you know the position that I'm in. So what what are some of the recommendations in regards to answering those type of questions in terms of how is this going to improve my bottom line? Great. Uh, one of the greatest use case is, uh, you know, there are a lot of people answering a lot of things uh, on the maintenance side or on service side, basically. Mm -hmm. They're getting queries on phone and you're booking appointments for them on phone. Uh, why not use something like service cloud and case management coupled with Einstein? That's one use case. The another is on the marketing side, which we have not even touched uh, in today's session, but a lot of features are there on the marketing side on the AI, which can generate an auto uh, marketing campaign as well. Now it it is provided that uh, you have a couple of them already present It will learn from that and have a consistent pattern through that. Now, that's one of the use case, but Paul, very honestly, uh, we don't need a big team to service, which is a very easy step to convince a management saying that, hey, implement a service layer which can make your task easier uh, and uh, you know reduce the headcount uh, so that limited people can still do the job and do a better job at it. You know, the past, yeah, no, I hear you and I agree with everything that you're saying. I think the big thing for me is how do I translate that to actual dollars and cents? So, so what I mean by that is, is, you know, are there some metrics in terms of um, past use cases that resulted in, you know, efficiencies? I, you know, you know, the, 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 the perfect one is maintenance. You know, uh, you're yeah. able to use bots to auto respond, et cetera, and all that. Only the, you know, escalated cases gets to a human being, you know, basically. Right. Uh, and, and that creates, you know, mass efficiencies. <clears throat> and I can do math, right, in terms of, okay, by doing that, now you've, you know, service five, you know, thousand customers. 
you know, with the bots versus having to have 100 people service those maintenance calls, you know, basically. So I'm just wondering if, if that's something that you're looking into in terms of, you know, helping provide some metrics, you know, so so from a business case perspective, uh, we can help our business um, folks out. Sure, I will, I'll uh, provide that metrics to you. It's definitely available. Uh, that simple math, which you spoke about, uh, you know, that is available out there and it has proven for so many organizations. It can also uh, prove out successful for somebody like yours, organ your organization, at some norms management. And right. as I was speaking about marketing is a very good use case. And you see, these, these are, uh, you know, some good use cases where uh, you can you can use uh, Einstein. Now, content is one place where a lot of people have started using Chat GPT, and I'll increase the font here. <laughs> Thanks. <to that. laughs> you know how old I am. So. Now. Uh, of course, and I understand that there's so much noise around so many yeah. use cases, yeah. carving a fixed use case saying that this can give us the maximum return is a challenge. So why don't service we identified one? Why don't why don't we take segment by segment and try to identify what is the best use case for this team to solve? Yes, uh, yes. with AI. Yes. I think we should do this exercise offline. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for asking that question. And similarly for marketing, we have for sales, we have for commerce, every other solution. We have use cases for Einstein. Cool. Anybody else? If not, uh, we have a session on case management specific to manufacturing cloud uh, coming in next month. Uh, we do this every every last Friday of the month. It is coming on 29th March, so we look forward to hosting you again. And in case you have any other questions, feel free to drop us an email or drop us a line. We'll be happy to answer that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.